colorless paper packages crackle loudly. Colorless yellow ideas sleep furiously. Sleep roses dangerously young colorless. Ben burada ne yaptığımı bilmiyorum. At Carnegie Mellon University, we have been working towards a system for speaking to computers. In this film, we will try to show the problems that arise in getting a computer to understand speech. We all know that a native speaker uses, unconsciously, his knowledge of the language, the environment, and the context in understanding a sentence. This knowledge includes the characteristics of the sounds, the stress and intonation patterns of speech, a dictionary of legal words, the grammatical structure of the language, the meaning of words and sentences, and the context of the conversation. To illustrate the problems of speech recognition by computers, let us examine the sentences we heard earlier and their inconsistencies with some of these sources of knowledge. Colorless paper packages crackle loudly. Colorless yellow ideas sleep furiously. Sleep roses dangerously young colors. Ben burada ne yaptığımı bilmiyorum. One would expect a listener to have more difficulty in recognizing a sentence if it is inconsistent with one or more of these sources of knowledge. In fact, Miller and Isard have quantified the difficulty in immediate recall of these sentences. How does one use all these sources of knowledge in understanding an utterance? Modern linguistic theory is of little help because it attempts to handle every possible sentence using primarily the syntactic source of knowledge. Some sentences may have two or more syntactic interpretations. This may be of concern for a system based on syntax alone. Let us consider the following anomaly. I saw the Statue of Liberty flying to New York. I saw the Statue of Liberty flying to New York. In a system where many diverse sources of knowledge are actively cooperating, a simple syntactic theory capable of handling a vast majority of the sentences might be adequate. Rare cases where the simple theory fails can be handled by using other sources of knowledge such as context. To illustrate how a given source of knowledge might be used in recognition, let us look at a variation of the Shannon experiment. It was warm that Sunday. Now we have the first five words of the sentence. Can you guess the next word? Afternoon. Another guess? Morning. Uh, evening. The correct word is night. Can you guess the next word? And? That's right. It appears that anticipation and subsequent verification are the principal mechanisms used in human perception. Notice in this context that only nouns were anticipated. Knowledge is also used to reject a guess. What about the next word? Yes. Cold. Car. That's not possible. It doesn't seem to fit. This hypothesize and verify paradigm works in most cases. However, if a knowledge is incomplete or inaccurate, people will tend to make erroneous hypotheses as illustrated by the following example. Now we'll try a different experiment. I'll say a sentence and you try and write down what you hear. 
in mighty Ozar, in clay nanar, in pine tar is, in oak nan is. Let's try it once again. In mighty Ozar, in clay nanar, in pine tar is, in oak nan is. These examples illustrate that the listener forces his own interpretation of what he hears and not necessarily what may have been intended by the speaker. In muddy ozar, in clay nanar. Because the subjects do not have the contextual framework to expect the words muddy together, they write more likely sounding combinations such as my deals or models. In pine tar is, in oak nan is. In the second half of the sentence, we find the same problem with words such as oak nanis. Notice that they fail to detect where one word ends and another begins. We shall see later that the hearsay system has similar problems with word segmentation. To equal human performance, a machine must use all these sources of knowledge effectively. In the hearsay system, this is achieved by representing knowledge as a set of cooperating parallel processes. Just as in the experiment, the hearsay system also uses sources of knowledge to generate hypotheses about what word might appear in a given context or to reject a guess. When the system makes errors, it is usually because the present state of its knowledge is incomplete and possibly inaccurate. Let's now observe the system at work. Pawn to queen four. I heard. Pawn to queen four. My move is pawn to queen four. Pawn goes to king four. What you're observing is a live demonstration of a speaker attempting to play a game of chess with the computer. I heard pawn goes to king four. My move is knight two, king bishop three. Let us now look at the performance of the system in a couple of other task domains, news retrieval and medical diagnosis. Tell me about war. When completed, the system will respond with all the news stories of the day about war. Tell me about Nixon. Here we have another example of an error resulting from inadequate knowledge at the acoustic phonetic level. The word tell is mistakenly identified as give. Have you been afraid of surgery? Let us reanalyze the preceding sentence without the higher level sources of knowledge. Have you been afraid of surgery? The effect of removing these sources of knowledge allows the consideration of many words 
which would normally be rejected by syntax and semantics. As a result, the system is overwhelmed by the number of options it must consider. Notice how much longer it takes to generate each new hypothesis. In addition, the number of options it must keep around causes the system to exceed its memory capacity. To be acceptable as an input medium, the system must not only perform with high accuracy, but it must also minimize the combinatorial explosion so as to respond as fast as a human would in a similar situation. To achieve this, it is our belief that the system performance will have to improve to about 90% without the use of syntax and semantics. We have attempted to show how various sources of knowledge interact in the recognition and understanding of a spoken utterance. As we increase the size of the vocabulary to 1,000 words or more, and as we relax the structure of the language, the need for effective use of all the sources of knowledge to control the combinatorial explosion becomes increasingly critical if we are to achieve the objective of approaching human performance in speech perception. Thank you.